Hello, everyone. Welcome to coverage of our MPL Gauntlet here, the final round of the Swiss, round number 12. Riley Knight in the booth alongside Corey Baumeister. We've already heard what's at stake here, Corey. This is a huge match. This is such a huge match. And honestly, as a Magic player, these are the moments you live for. Winning in Magic it really separates, you know, the the giants of the game um, from people that get so very close. These are the matches that are just so difficult to keep your composure when so much is on the line, like uh, Monty was stating here in that pre-show. Yes, indeed. Heading into this, of course, Monty was setting the stage, talking about just how much is at stake here for these two players, Yoshihiko Ikawa and Luka Manyi, both of them at seven and four. What does a win mean for them, Corey? Let's remind our viewers. Yeah, win just means you are locking up that top eight spot and you give yourself a chance to be one of the three of the top eight that go to Worlds, that gets that minimum $50,000, has a chance to have a, your likeness onto a card. And really making it to a World Tournament are what most of us all just dream of doing, right? You know, it, it's it's the pinnacle of play. Whenever you tell somebody, hey, you know, I want to I wanna set championship, something like that, they're like, okay, cool. But if you say, I just won the world championship, that is a huge difference. Everyone knows what that is, right? If you, if you win the world championship, everybody knows. Yeah, I mean, that's something that Paolo pointed out as well. One of the things, I mean, obviously, he's obviously one of the greatest of all time, but he was saying that winning the world championships the last world championships enabled him to kind of bridge that gap into the muggle world and go to people and say oh well you know i won i'm, I'm the world champion of this game and people are like oh that's that's impressive you go and say oh, i have a powerful wizard who slings mighty spells to win the pro <laughs> tour a mythic invitational people are like all right well that's very good you nerd whereas you know <laughs> world champion that's something that everyone understands and that's what's on the line exactly. here for these players a chance to make it to the world championship this year the top eight of this event will send three players to the World Championship 27 coming, coming up in October. And both Yoshihiko Ikawa and Luka Mani are hungry for it. We've got Naya in the hands of Luka Mani, this ridiculous Jeskai Mutate deck in the hands of Yoshihiko Ikawa. A lot of Japanese playing uh, players playing it this weekend. Very much a situation here where Mani is the beatdown, Corey. Yep, absolutely. Trying to make sure you hit Winota. This is really the game where Winota is at its best because post board you see a ton of red cap melees coming in and that's a very troublesome card really for both decks. You know, red cap melee being able to hit Goldspan Dragon or Winota cleanly for one mana is very, very strong. So this is the game, especially where Luca wants to have one of these really over the top Winota draws before all those removal spells come in. So, Goldspan Dragon getting across here. Uh, putting the board to shame, really, Ikawa, with that 4 4. For all the work that Manny's done, he's left with a uh, piddly pair of 1 1s. Prosperous Innkeeper's done some work. Another card that, uh, you know, we talked this weekend already, Corey, about some of the cards that have made an impact from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Prospy is certainly a role player. Not really a, an all-star standout, huge, big, splashy mythic or anything, but it, it's it's been doing some work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, doing a lot of work in Historic as well. It, it has proved to be one of the better cards from that set for sure. So Manny having a good old think about what he wants to do here. A couple of different options. He does have that perfect mana to cast Minsk. He's also got a treasure token as well to power out a one-drop Jasper Sentinel should he choose to play one of the three drops. Is he considering which three drop to play here? Because it seems to me like you you definitely want to play either Elite Spellband Binder or Minsk. Or is he perhaps thinking about Crosby into Jasper Sentinel? No, I really think it is going to be which three drop you want to play here. And with how it stands right now, we do see some mutate action from Akawa as well. But the double unsubstantiate doing, uh, as you would like to say, the bad remand here is going to be really good on whatever um, three drop is yeah. played. Maybe in hindsight, being able to go Prosperous Innkeeper and Jasper Sentinel to be able to kind of double spell here maybe is a little bit more ideal um, with perfect information. But yeah, so far, this is going to be a really tough game for Luca to win here. I guess playing Prosperous Innkeeper to begin with gives you more options because you can then cast a three drop as well with the treasure that's made by the Innkeeper. But yeah. uh, any, any way you slice it, it's difficult to beat those two... Uh... The unsubstantiates there, in addition to another Prismari command, this Lord Dracus as well, which of course, as Corey pointed out in the last round that we saw this, is just free to mutate 
onto a Goldspan Dragon. The mutated ability does target, so it generates a treasure in the Goldspan Dragon, which can be tapped for two mana. And hey, look at that. Lord Dracus costs two mana to mutate. So that's what's known in the business as a combination, Corey. <laughs> yep, uh, a, a splinter twin-like situation, I would suppose. Mm. Being able to get back either a, a disruptive element like unsubstantiate here is probably what we're going to see, but also yep. if if Akawa ever runs out of cards, being okay. able to get back expressive iteration as well to make sure and just always kind of go forward with um, drawing a bunch of cards just makes this deck so powerful with so many options to be able to choose from. Yoshiko Kawa here, firing on all cylinders. You can play Minsk if you want, Luca, but it's not going to do you any good. Even the Asika's Chariot opens you up to a blowout from uh, Prismari Command with Shadow Shock. So I don't think any road that Manyi can take here is, is going to be one that he's going to like to walk down, as we see. Unsubstantiate, return the beloved Ranger to hand by the look of things. Yeah, and it's almost a situation for Akawa, just like, whatever you play, I'm going to unsubstantiate when you have that extra one in the wings. And with having five lands as well to work with next turn, it mm. can be double gold span time. Um, you know, so it, it's it's starting to look very, very dangerous. But Akawa's just saying, you know what? Minsk isn't a big deal. It does yeah. not really stop what I'm doing. The double gold span dragon is looking to be a two-turn clock no matter what. Eight plus eight, 16. Even if uh, Luca gains a little bit of life off this Prosperous Innkeeper, even if Luca gains three life, the pro the Prismari Command can be that extra points to finish this game off. Another land to pick up here for Ikawa, who plays it out. Got another Goldspan Dragon. Plenty of mana, plenty of business here. Across it comes. One of the keys, of course, with Goldspan Dragon, the fact that it generates two mana the turn it comes down, costing an effective three, assuming it can land and attack. And even if they remove it, they, it uh, it'll often leave a treasure token behind after it's targeted with a removal spell. So Goldspan Dragon, certainly a powerhouse of the standard format, expecting big yeah. things from this card post-rotation as well. Oh, yeah. Cards like that, we've seen the power level of them in the past, right? Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, Nissa who shakes the world. These cards that cost five, but then immediately get you two mana uh, back to be able yeah. to protect it. That is just the recipe for success that we've seen in standard for the last three, four, five years. And Goldspan Dragon is a card that fits in that mold as well. Even if you're two, uh, the two mana spell that you're using is a bad remand, it's still something that kind of oh, yeah. comes free with it no. and uh, it shows off its strength. I mean, this is the thing, right? You pay five, and then it's two for you and three for me. It's the card the play. It's the card the players love. Any any card that can uh, that can give you that kind of discount, and uh, you know, you, you'd think they play as a five drop. They don't really. They play as a three drop. You can play on turn five. Yeah, it's a a card that everybody loves. If you're the one casting it, Riley. If you're the one that has ah, to yeah. play against I it, I should have specified. Uh, Slightly more frustrating. <laughs> so let's see what's next here. So it Jasper looks Stanton like... So it looks like this is going to be played. Unsubstantiate can be thrown to the Jaspera Sentinel, even if there's another land from Luca, which we know there is not, um, to be able to replay this Jaspera Sentinel. You could unsubstantiate it again. Prismari Command. Yeah. yeah, I guess we are one short here if there was a land. But if not, we get to end step, unsubstantiate, just para sentinel or main phase, bounce that to the hand, attack for eight, and then Prismari nope. to finish it off. Or, or just, or draw, just another draw another dragon. dragon. Or just draw another dragon off the top. Easy. Triple gold span dragon's going to get the job done for here for Yoshihiko Ikawa. He could remove that uh, Jasper Sentinel as a reach blocker, but doesn't need to. A clean attack for 12 here. Even with the block, Manyi goes down to one. And then the shock mode on Prismari Command. All that has to happen here is Ikawa has to not target anything other than Manyi with the two damage. I guess, you know, if a meteor falls on his house, that's also going to be a problem. But I think those are the outs that Manyi has at the moment here. I feel like we're having a flashback. Weren't we just seeing the triple gold span dragon in the last match being that third one being far too much to overcome? This team is pretty good at drawing three of them when they are needed. So nice work by Akawa.
Mania here, considering I think sacrificing the dog in order to keep the sentinel around, the selfless savior can give the reach blocker indestructible. I don't know what else. There's no other play he can make, right? No, that's only the consideration. And Akawa, instead of playing the Prismari command pre-combat to just let Luca mm. know that the game is over, is using up some of Luca's brain power here for yep. the rest of the match, trying to get all the edges possible. Yep, yep, yep. Just uh, burning off some of that fatigue bar. And, and rope, yep. That's the right. mental rope. <laughs> that's right. That's what I'm talking about, right? Like, obviously, he's got his health, he's got his matter, and then the, the green bar, the, the, the fatigue. I'll have to go and eat some cheese wheels between the match to restore it. Okay, no sacrifice the dog, but of course this is all academic here. Man, you choosing not to rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic because now it's a Prismari command. Target you with the shock, target me with the whatever, and the game is over. Luca Man, you're going down in game number one after Ikawa. I mean, was able to defend himself from a pretty anemic onslaught to begin with. The Naya deck didn't really do what uh, Manu wanted it to do there. There was no sign of Winota, no real aggression, no real traction for Manu. Yep. And Ikawa, I mean, Triple Dragon will certainly get you there. But even without that, he was in a very comfortable spot. Yeah, it was, it was all a product of that mulligan, uh, Luca mulligan, down to just six, but then the opening hand was double Fabled Passage, no other land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it made a lot of sense to keep. Um, rather than going down to five, and just so happens that that kind of draw is not going to beat the best draw of the Jeskai Mutate decks. Of course, if if Akawa was going to stumble a little bit, maybe that hand could have played, but just a product of mulligans there for sure. And here we see the uh, the kind of deck building that Naya Winota players enjoy mm, yes. here. Combo. Blade Historian and Force. Basic Forest. Got him. Truly a work of art. <laughs> uh, an awkward hand here, and obviously Blade Destroyer, not a card that you're looking to hard cast a lot of the time. Typically, it's the, a card yeah. you're wanting to play, uh, or, or cheat into play, I should say, with a win no to trigger. But, man, he's not going to push his luck. He's going to keep this hand, even if it is a little awkward. He's got that Prosby on turn two. That means a win are on turn three, if needs be. So not looking too bad here, assuming he can find uh, some more lands. Yeah, and that's the awkward thing is here, we're seeing something from this Naya Winota deck you don't normally see as well, and that's a reactive hand. This is a mm. proactive deck, you just want to be going as fast as possible, you want to be playing something in the battlefield every turn, but that just shows the strength to me of Red Cap Melee in this matchup, and how much Luka values that card of being able to deal with Goldspan Dragon, because look, from Akawa's Jeskai Mutate deck, it's not like there's a way to win outside of red creatures. You need red creatures on the battlefield. So if you have red cap melee that for one mana deals with any of them, that is kind of the recipe for success. And Clothus is also the recipe for success where you get that inevitability, even with no cards in graveyard right now, that is eventually going to be a problem five mm. turns, six turns, seven turns down the line. And it's a tough card as well for Ikawa's deck to deal with, you know, an indestructible enchantment that can yeah. slowly but surely winnow away your life total, provide a bit of extra mana when needed. No white mana here for the selfless saviour. Valakut Awakening is going to offer some utility for Ikawa. I think he's going to be in a couple of these red removal spells here, holding on to just the Cinder Store, Cinderclasm, I should say, in the face of that 1-1. Yeah. One, one. Just enchantments in general right now are really tough to deal with. Now, one thing that these Jeskai Mutate decks actually have going on is unsubstantiate, you know, not bad, but uh, that's really the only way to stop it, and it's not even the best answer. We don't have any powerhouses like mm. Anol to be able to clean them mm. up. No, I mean, that's why we're playing seeing main deck Anol. It's interesting, I was on Twitter and I saw Saffron Olive, um, probably better known as Seth, uh, make an interesting point about the role that... Uh, utility artifacts and enchantments play these days mm. now throughout magic's history of course uh you know we haven't seen a lot of uh main deckable gray oh sorry main deckable artifact enchantment removal and that has made yes. utility artifacts utility enchantments much more valuable yep. and as they've become more powerful in recent years so too have we seen an increase in the number of flexible answers that you can play in your main deck case in point prismari mm -hmm. command ordinarily you play a four drop five drop enchantment that thing's sticking around in game number one yeah. because people don't have ways to to remove it and they're going to have to bring in dedicated sideboard cards to get rid of it 
These days, cards are more flexible. Cards are more powerful. They provide you with more options. And so cards like a Seeker's Chariot, you know, a safe bet. Cards, enchantments, artifacts, things that required previously narrow answers are now getting cleaned up by the splash damage from flexible stuff that is being printed and to be main deckable. Now, this is my point that I'm making here. It's kind of undercut a little bit by the fact that people are also main decking a null. So take it with a grain of salt, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the point remains that these utility cards that used to be kind of untouchable, right? Like they were, these were mm -hmm. cards that you could only really interact with in game two. And now at much greater risk, Corey. Yeah, absolutely. No, that is very well said. And it just shows how cards like Binding the Old Gods mm. have proven to be so good because, well, it is just a look at any permanent, destroy it. You know, that those kind of things are just so, so very strong right now because, well, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of dynamic decks in standard, in, in modern, in historic, really just in magic right now that you got to have these well-rounded answers. So, yeah, very well said. Clothis is munching up that graveyard now remember that cloth's ability is not a may you have to do it mm -hmm. so it's not the sort of card that you want to play in a, in a deck where you need a nice full graveyard because once cloth is uh finished eating through the lunch buffet that is your opponent's graveyard she's going to look for some dessert that third course she's going to look at your graveyard to do that but that's not a problem for money doesn't have a whole lot in the way of graveyard interaction here so he doesn't mind or graveyard shenanigans so he doesn't matter he doesn't mind uh throwing it the way of god of destiny yeah, and another pretty awkward draw from Luca. You know, we're getting to this late stage of the game where Akala is amassing a ton of mana. And this is this part of the game where Akala is supposed to be dealing with a, a battlefield that's going super wide from these Winota decks. But yeah. as we're seeing, you know, turn six place selfless savior is not exactly what the doctor ordered from here. And that is a product of keeping a landlight hand and using that treasure, the only third source of mana on turn three without being able to support it. It was a risk. Um, I, I, I agree with it at the time, but it just makes for a little bit awkward draws. So, Goldspan Dragon targeted with a red cap melee here. Let's see if Ikawa wants to fight against this. He does. He saw it coming. He saw it coming. But there is a second red cap melee. Always got to play around the second red cap melee. Yep, and here's the unsubstantiate oh to be mate. able to save it here. This was the whole draw to this yeah. hand from Luca, yeah. And with this unsubstantiate and being able to generate another treasure, you can sack those three treasures for mana, play Goldspan Dragon again. We're in combat, so you're not going to be able to attack with it, but you could play it again. Oh, yeah, you can't sack it during combat because you will lose the mana, so... Not really going to be able to happen this turn, but you get to save it. That's the main thing here. Mm. And it's looking really good for Akawa in this win and in situation for the top eight of this MPL gauntlet. Looking really good indeed. And I mean, even after all that, look at that. Three wow. treasures left over thanks to the way that that, uh, that dragon was targeted there. And now a Lord Dracus as well. Again, free, effectively yeah. free to mutate this, bring back a piece of interaction, can cast sword coming, can cast unsubstantiate. Even things... better to bounce the red cap. Sorry to interrupt you there, but even better to bounce the red cap because now you get saw it coming to just counter it on the way and then you get that four damage in. So a really nice play from Akawa. So I like this a lot. Japanese player here in a strong position, a commanding position. Having to think about what he wants to bring back, you'd think the obvious choice would be saw it coming given that it is a hard counter spell that you can cast without any difficulty. That's what he goes for. He's got Fire Prophecy as well for some creature interactions, should he so choose. I think Ikawa realizing that Clothis is going to start munching up that graveyard, so he needs to get while the getting's good. And I saw it coming, entering the hand, certainly something that he'll be very, very glad to have. Luca Mani, on his part, finds a fifth land, but it may be too little too late here. He knows the yeah. source coming in, it coming is in hand. He knows that he's not going to get the chance to, uh, you know, resolve exactly what he wants, but he does have an option here given the fact that he can resolve to or he can at least force through one spell yeah this all being said now that we have saw it coming that's kind of in reserve for this red cap melee to keep your gold span dragon alive you're gonna get some spells that are gonna resolve 
Yeah, not even trying to fire this off here, just trying to get yeah. in an extra couple points of damage. And then we're just looking at this. Remember when I said five, six turn down the road, Clothis is gonna make a big impact. Well, it's happening. Goldsmith yeah. Dragon is already connected. And look at Luca's life total. Luca's still yeah, at 24 I mean, in plenty of room. All the stuff that I was saying about Ikawa being in a good position is, is, is true when you don't factor in the fact that he is on seven and this Clothis has got no shortage of food here. So and even Ikawa has to end this one. He has to get this one done. Yeah, and advantage bar heading right back to Luca. At this point, we can get a Winota trigger. You're either going to lose the dragon mm. or you're going to get a Winota trigger with the fact that Akawa drew two blanks off the yeah. Fire Prophecy and the draw step. What Akawa really needed was a Vadra to start this combo from going, but no relevant draws here with all this mana and nothing to do with it is a huge problem. And we're going to have a really big problem on the battlefield this turn. It could be even game this turn, depending on what this counter spell gets thrown out. And kind of punishing as punished as well for throwing away that uh, spike field hazard, which would deal with the hamster. We're going to see one of these cards resolve it'll be either winota or it'll be the red cap melee so here is a really interesting scenario here i think i would really like to see lucas start with red cap melee and just if it gets countered sure then you can just play blade historian attack for four mm -hmm. put put a kawa down to one and then be like yeah you're at one with a cloth that's in play Clothis is not a creature right now, so unsubstantiate doesn't even bounce it. It's an enchantment. So at this point, I would think it's just over. So Winota is going to get eaten up by this saw it coming. And a couple of... I mean, Ikar was in a very, very good position here. Was in a great position, but then the top of his library has just treated him so unkindly. And really, the MVP of this game here has been Clothis. Clothis has put in the shift, and as a result, Ikawa finds himself in a very precarious life total and needs to find something pretty incredible pretty quickly. Yeah, Clothis is one of those cards from this Naya Winota deck where you know every single deck post board is gonna be trying to kill Winota, because you have to be. That's such such a powerful card. And when decks are trying to play that style of gameplay, Clothis just has all the time in the world to munch away at your life total mm -hmm. and not really care if you're killing all the creatures, because eventually Clothis always have an, has inevitability. Yeah, Chekhov's Clothis, getting it done. <laughs> As you say, unsubstantiate's no good on the Clothus, but it does get rid of the hamster. Lotus Copper of the draw, not the best, but still in a good position with this Clothus. Car with the sword coming in hand. Let's see what Manu wants to do here. Gets rid of the unsubstantiate. Yeah, wow, Clothus has just been so impressive. And Nikawa needs an answer to it here and now, Corey. I don't think there is one to be honest. So I think we are going to see a game three in this win and in between <laughs> these two players uh, to see who locks up that top eight spot. It looks like it here. Unless uh, Ikawa can find, I don't know, rest in peace or something, finds a Vadrock, but it is too late. That would have been very useful a couple of turns ago, but as it is now, not enough. And so Luca Manyi equalizes. And we're heading to game number three between Jeskai Mutate and Naya Winota. A reminder here that these players, both at seven and four, are playing for a, a slot in our top eight of the MPL Gauntlet. The MPL Gauntlet, of course, awarding three slots to the World Championship later in October. And with 50k just for turning up to this tournament, you know that these players we're seeing here are hungry for success. You know that they are trying to get across the line here, snag that top eight spot, play their guts out, snag that World championship invite yeah not bad i remember going to big events back in the day you get those drawstring bags you get a couple booster packs you get a shirt mm. all really cool stuff if there was fifty thousand dollars in that bag as well i think i would have uh, been a little bit more excited as well so a really nice thing to get as you walk in the door uh for the world championship yeah and that's how they're doing it as well they're just putting fifty thousand dollars in drawstring in bags. cash right yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, I remember when Andre won uh, that the Mythic Championship in Richmond, and he won you know however yeah. many hundreds of thousands of dollars for that, and they they gave it to him then and there. He's like, I don't have like I, I don't have check luggage. I can't take like what am I going to mm. do right? Because they're just handing him like pennies and nickels and stuff, whatever else. And he's like, I don't have yeah. enough room for this. And you know the what's you know like, oh, well, what are we going to do? How how is there any other way to give you this money? I don't think there is. Sorry, you know so. <laughs> 
<laughs> terrible. Yeah, and then, He's and taken then they suitcases the filled with. Uh, yeah, that's right. Then they <laughs> mail the trophy. Yeah, but you need the cash right away. You need the cash right away, you know. Oh, that's too in, in good. Those, in those little dime bags, that's right. <laughs> anyway, we move on to game number three now between Luka Mani, Yoshiko Ikawa, and a decent opener here for the both of these two players by the look of things. Saw it coming put on ice for a later turn, and here is Lotus Cobra, which I imagine is... will be instantly killed by the spike field hazard, particularly with that land being drawn by Ikawa here. Can't let yeah, Spikefield Hazard, right when it was printed, it was killing a lot of Lotus Cobras um, because it was doing, Lotus Cobra was doing a lot of very, very uh, strong things in standard there with Omnath. But here, this is the best hand that Luca has had in this match, by mm -hmm. far. Able to just cast spells every single turn and really fire on all cylinders. So this should be a really good one. And on the other side, we see the Cub Warden. So this is going to be an extremely big draw. If we can get that into play and start mutating. Oh no, the tap oh, land. So rough, Oof. dude. So rough. But it's not the end of the world. Ikawa here has the Mystical Dispute. So he's going to be able to spend his mana this turn, especially if Mani looks to fire off something like that Clothus. Uh, yeah, Ikar will be very, very happy to snipe that with his dispute. Although I think Mani will probably hold on to the Clothus here and maybe expose something like Elite Spellbinder to a potential counter yeah. spell. I think we're going to see Elite Spellbinder as well. I don't think we're going to see Chariot just because if this, if the Chariot got countered and then Akawa untapped and played Goldspan Dragon, that's the nightmare scenario, right? We don't, we know that's not going to happen, but Luca does not know that. So Red Cap Malay kept up here in the case of yep. a potential dragon, but no, it's just going to be Cub Warden instead. Pretty interesting to leave in disputes as well against this deck. When you're on the play, it makes a lot of sense. I'm assuming Akala takes those out on the draw, but against, you know, a non-blue deck to leave in uh, just a three mana, mana leak essentially uh, is pretty interesting to me. So why why is it better in one situation on the planet or on the draw? Because when you're on the play, you get to counter all the really powerful three drops or Azika's Chariot if there was a ramp spell, right? If the Naya Winota deck goes Cobra into Azika's Chariot and you untap and play your third land as the Jeskai Mutate deck and have Mystical Dispute up, you feel silly. But if you're on the play, you're able to counter that spell, um, which, which makes a big difference. Right, so so often they'll be resolving big four drops while you've just got two lands in play, so it's a little late to the party in that stage. That stage. Yeah, but if you're on the play, you can you can actually interact with the powerful four drops, and that's the main MO of this Naya Winota deck, is mm -hmm. the four drops are just the best in standard right now. Azigas Chariot, Winota, both devastating cards. Wow, wow great draw there. So, Vadrock, Lord Dracus. We're going to see the Lord Dracus, I think, mutated here. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, got some good so cards to bring back. You could just bring back Saw It coming and have a counter spell up, and then next turn use Badrock to bring back another spell and cast something for free. So mm -hmm. right now, Akawa is kind of going off as far as the combo goes when you're not actually just winning the game on the spot. Creating these lifelink um, attackers or these lifelink bo blockers is really huge here. Yeah, yeah, the little one ones that are going to be able to hold off all the indestructible nonsense that uh, that Clothus can do. Other really important point to note here is that Cub Warden, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, Corey. Cub okay. Warden, as a 3-5, that stat line is more or less perfect against the most commonly played removal in the format currently. Yep, it might end with uh, being a white card. You know, it might as well say indestructible with how the removal spells <laughs> have played out, you know? I mean, if it were an angel or a demon or something like that, it, it would basically be just that. But the True. reason for this is it... Um, <laughs> the reason for this is that, of course, it doesn't die to, uh, to Red Cap Melee. It doesn't die to Chop Down. It doesn't die to Burning Hands. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it doesn't die to Stomp, but, I mean, that's not... News <laughs> like that's not. I didn't need to point that one out. So it is just very. Like it is just very resilient in the face of a lot of uh, standards commonly played removal. And now a Vadrock as well. This is huge. Look at this. Doesn't only get to flashback something for free. Can also return something from the graveyard and get two little cubs to ward here. So not a bad turn as Ikawa goes tall and wide with his mutate stack and those little one ones. 
Yeah, and, uh, you know, not the best use of the Vadrock ability there, just one damage to the face. Not necessarily great when your opponent is at such a high life total. But, oh, I was going to say, the shields are down in a sense because we know about the one saw it coming. But luckily for Akawa, we're able to into the Royal in combat with this Winota. But while that's being said, that means Winota can crew the chariot, get in with a bunch of cats and the Cadillac, and still get a lot of damage in. There may be cats on the other side, but there are a little bit bigger cats here on Luca's side. So this Winota isn't just an absolute disaster here for Ikawa because he does have that into the Royal, as you say, but still it puts him in an awkward position. Yeah. With Manyi able to uh, at least, you know, make this combat work out in his favor. So Seeker's Chariot crewed by the Winota. Now we're going to go to combat just to make sure, of course. And here it comes. Bounce the Winota. Yeah. And that that is really bad news. But Akawa, outside of that counter spell, is kind of out of gas. So as good as this flying, first striking, 3-5, life-linking creature that makes more creatures is, I would still say advantage is Luka because this battlefield is ever-growing. Mm -hmm. With Azika's Chariot where, you know what? The fun is stopped from Akawa's side without a big draw. Looks like one of these cats may be staying back here. Does Ikawa want to trade, potentially get rid of some of these uh, these cats that are on the battlefield or even maybe the, the chariot uh, in an effort to perhaps, uh, you know, reduce the how good a Winota could be in the future, uh, make yeah. Blade Historian less effective? Yeah, I think if Luca went all in on an attacks and only left one cat back, there might have been a decision, that's a big draw, to not block so you can kind of have a big swing back and gain a bunch of life. But Ooh, Ooh Prismari Command is really, really nice here in the face of this Asika's Chariot. Uh, that's a great pickup here for Ikawa, who can play that to not only get rid of the Chariot, but also clean up one of the cats that has it's created. Probably just playing this Triome as well. And yeah. very, very smartly, um, Akawa has put the command in hand instead of put it into exile zone. So now it's kind of this unknown information. But now look at this. There is no way that Akawa can cast both. You can't Prismari command even if you make a treasure and saw it coming something. So saw it coming has to be saved, which adds a really interesting... Um, little dynamic here with this selfless savior draw because Akawa would love to be like, in response, I'll Prismari command that chariot so you can't save it, right? Yeah. But you have to leave Saad coming open for Winota, otherwise the game just ends. Yeah, so Ikawa, if that had been a an untapped land instead of Triome there, you'd be in a much better spot. Yep. But as it is, yep. just a little short. Yeah, because we would we would be able to destroy target artifact, destroy Azika's chariot, make a treasure, and then counter Winota, and then you just got to beat three two two cats plus one 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 selfless savior, and Akala's battlefield does that right now. But it's still, Manu, not Close. completely out of the woods. He, if he plays this Winota into the known sword coming, I think you can reasonably expect that it's going to get countered. And then he's going to have to just knock the top of the deck and hope for some more business because the stuff that he's got on the battlefield at least is manageable for the moment. Yep, so and we know to put on the stack. And here's one thing that could happen. If Azika's Chariot gets in here, there's some world where Akawa wants to just block with the 3-5. You get to still gain life with first strike, but then the damage would be dealt to this Cup Warden. And this is going to be the only attack. It's really tempting to just block, gain three life, because it makes sense if you were Luca to just attack and make a cat, right? Akawa yeah. correctly doesn't block there, so a really nice play. Yeah, because if he'd blocked then, it, would have, it could have been taken up by the red cap melee, of course, because the damage would have been enough to finish off the 3-5. So Ikawa exactly. recognizing that Manyi is probably stuck on a piece of dead removal. He probably even has figured out that it is uh, red cap melee here. Yeah, it's either red cap melee or land is what I'd be thinking. You know, the, those would be the only two things that make mm -hmm. sense. And Akawa just really sniffed that out, and that was uh, an incredible no block. And now with double prism, oh my, oh my the hits goodness. keep coming. Okay, well, the top of uh, Luca Ma, I said the strategy was knock the top of the deck, hope for something good. And I'll tell you <laughs> what, that's exactly what has happened here, as he's got Kenrith with enough mana 
to give everything haste and keep up this red cap melee. Don't forget that everything gets trample as well, which will reduce the uh, effectiveness of those 1-1 one, one tokens as chump blockers. I'm having such a flashback to when Luca was just going off with that Ranger class. Luca's really good at drawing, you know, creature after creature after creature after creature on turns nine through 13 or whatever. Just really crucial draw steps here at maybe the biggest match of either of their lives, realistically. I mean, this is this match it holds so much stakes. So Kenrith on the stack now in response. Looks like we're going to have a Prismari command. We might even have to loot here to find an answer to Kenrith from Akawa. And yep. yeah, it is. It's uh, I think it's it's shock faithless looting here. And we're going to see the. I think we're going to see, yeah, the Seeker's Chariot crude in response. Given indestructible in response here so do you fire off the other prismari command now just to kill the chariot you can't really and yeah, finds that's... a sword coming oh my that was huge that is a massive draw here that keeps him right back in it now with kenrith wow not entering the battlefield a clutch draw one good draw deserves another so sword coming getting rid of the return king this is crazy. And now we'll see. Now we're getting to the spot where Akawa might feel priced into blocks, but still has the soul read that there's a red cap melee to not yeah. put that cub warden at risk. Unsubstantiate for the cub warden. That could be huge. Substantiate's not too bad. Because you can replay. Yeah, we're still a little bit short of doing anything too impactful. Okay. Manu's luck has run it. He's drawn a land. <laughs> 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 He's drawn a land. So, wakes up the chariot once again. You can see this cat army just growing and growing. And now we're getting to the point where you're pretty priced in to block something. I would assume we still just see an Azika's chariot attack. Might just see a chump block with one of the one ones at this point. No, oh, yeah, see, okay. I see like the double this. block. Because yeah. now you have the unsubstantiate to just bl bounce the cub warden if it does get taken down. So yes, this is a this is what Akawa was waiting for. Some kind of card that he can kind of juke Luca with um, in response to this red cap melee. So gains three after first strike damage, and now the trade between a seeker's chariot and the cub warden. Chariot down, and yeah, we I think we fire this off, but this unsubstantiate is going to be huge. Yeah, puts two more cards, three more cards back into Ikawa's hand here. Yep. And with seven mana... He if can we have a gold span dragon, we might just be done here. Well, yeah, I'm just trying to think as well. If there's a land off the top, it's even not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad here, because you can go Cub Warden Lord Dracus, right? And have enough mana to recast Unsubstantiate. Unsubstantiate, yeah. Oh, but he's, he's going to mutate onto the... Ah, oh, he's going to mutate here because, of course, it's yeah, he gets it's free. He gets two more cubs. Yeah, so here's the thing. You can either put uh, Vadrock onto Cub Warden, get two more creatures as well, or mm. get this and get Unsubstantiate back or yeah. into the world. kind of serves the same purpose. All of a sudden, you know, advantage right back to Akawa with that unsubstantiated draw. This game has been unbelievable. Yeah, and finding that land as well was a key part of this because without it, he actually didn't wouldn't have enough mana. You can see he's only got two mana left up, so he can only yeah. cast that up to unsubstantiate because he found an untapped land. So Ikawa right back in this. He's assembled a cat uh, army of his own here. And now Vadrock. And you can see it slipping away from Manya. His head goes into his hand. As we see the Cub Warden take to the skies once again, 3-5 First Strike Lifelinker. And what's going to be flashed back? Looking for something, uh, looking to, to fill up the hand with something like an expressive iteration. 
Yeah, Sod coming to the hand. So no matter what Luca draws, it's going to be countered. Expressive iteration to find a little bit more gas. Maybe a gold span dragon to just lock this up. Akawa is a couple turns away from framing a cub warden and leaving that in his yeah. house forever, <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's his, it's his all-time favorite card now because this card has done yeah. so much work for him. Saw it coming. Unsubstantiate. Red cap Malay in hand. Four mana available. So no shortage of options here for Yoshihiko Ikawa. Luca Mani, on the other hand, it looks like he really, really needs something special, and he needs it quick, smart. The lifelink on Cub Warden has kept Ikawa alive, enabled him to weather this storm, and he is edging ever closer here to a slot in our top eight. Another Asika's Chariot off the top, but Ikawa has got the answer in the form of Saw It Coming. And so you'd think even a Seeker's Chariot, you know, a, a terrific card, one of these powerhouse four drops out of this deck, out of this Nye Winota deck, it's probably not going to be enough here. Yeah, I was thinking maybe this was going to be the time to just attack with a giant layer and start picking apart these one ones one at a time and then wait till you have just a bunch of spells to play in one turn. That's what you have to do from Luka. You have to overload um, Akawa's mana and hope that that's enough, but... With this unsubstantiate oh cupboard, Lord Dracus, Fadric yeah. combo, this is a combo. It's not an infinite combo like we see with Goldspan, but he's going to do this every time. He's yeah. eventually going to bring back unsubstantiate, keep accruing this. So the only thing that's going to be holding Akawa back is how much mana he can use each turn. So another two cubs after one is mutated. So you're up one cub after having done that. Another land as well. Not mutating anything else. No need at this stage with a handful of interactive cards like Saw It Coming, Red Cap Malay, Prismari Command, and a land off the top here for the Italian. I think he's I think he's reading the writing on the wall here, Corey. I think he knows his goose yep. is cooked. Yep, exactly. Akawa's Don't forget, taking that Saw It Coming is face up. You know, it's not like man, you doesn't know it's there. Yeah. No, he's just going to keep doing this one after another. Akawa's taking a lesson from DJ Khaled and just another one, another one, another one, over and over. Cyndaclasm. Okay. To get, rid of, to get rid of all of the cats yeah. except for the Cub Warden there. Reset the board. All of his hard work, Corey. <laughs> yeah, doesn't even want to attack with him first is interesting. But here, here they come again. Life, but now, Lord Dracus popped underneath the Cub Warden. Going to make some more tokens, return something. He's got another counter spell. He does, but he's going to take unsubstantiate, of course. And, and no not too much to can do really anything go wrong else. Here. Yep. Not too much can really go wrong, even with the layer of the Hydra. It can be bounced, unlike a lot of creature lands. It can be bounced by unsubstantiate. We see a lot of bounce spells fail to hit. Stuff like, uh, you know, anything that returns a target. Non-land permanent often is the case with most playable bounce spells, but not so with unsubstantiate. Just return that to your hand. Boomerang, my friend. Yep. Get Put that, that out back. Of here. Here's one turn. Here's one turn to force something through. Luca needs something big to be able to play Azika's Chariot. It's going to get countered. Ranger Class is maybe one of these cards that could maybe get Luca back into it. We've seen Luca just chain stuff off the top over and over and over again uh, earlier against, I believe, Javier Dominguez, which is Javier's only loss on the first day. Uh, let's see if, you know, how this is going to play out where if Luca can resolve one of these spells and maybe just go crazy. So Manny now has a choice. He's going to fire off the Ranger class first by the look of things. No? Yeah, I think Akawa okay. was, was shaking his head a little bit, thinking that he didn't really want to unsubstantiate the land. I think maybe forgot about that a little bit. Um, is, you know, would have rather just held back the Cub Warden for one extra turn and then uh, mutate Vadrock onto it, mm. so then it has flying and you don't have to worry about that. So I think that was a slight misstep from Akawa looking at his reaction, but of course not a devastating uh, misstep. And also just actual never punish because he draws another unsubstantiate off the top, so yeah. he hasn't lost access <laughs> to that effect anymore. A very timely and tidy draw here for the Japanese players. We see Cub Warden popped uh, on top of a Vadrock, which is mutated. Now, going to bring back a second counter spell? Why not? Why not? Locking down the fort even further. Prismari Command can be cast here. Destroy target artifact and shock. So a tidy answer to most of that Asika's Chariot in the form of the Prismari Command. 
And now with a tapped layer of the Hydra, you can get in with the Cub Warden with safety. It's starting to look basically impossible at this point for Luca to come out of this. This may very easily be Akawa locking up that top eight spot. It's certainly looking very, uh, very close to it indeed. Saw it coming fired off. There's a second one in hand for Ikawa, you know. And you can see Luca Manya here offering GG and concedes. And Yoshihiko Ikawa finds his way into the top eight of the MPL gauntlet and edges ever closer to a slot at the World 